started, uh, it's 6 o'clock, I think that clock's a little bit behind. So, uh, Ms. Whitby, if you'll call the roll, or Kate, uh, Taylor, sorry. Ross? Here. White? Here. Taylor? Here. Robinson? Here. Baxter? Here. Harris? Here. Ginn? Here. Height? Present. Quorum is present. Thank you very much. I invite you to rise for a prayer and pledge to be led by yours truly. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to meet here tonight as free men and women. It will give us the wisdom that we can temper our actions and above all else walk in the light of God. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So moved. Thank you. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. Thank you very much. How about communications? Any, anybody want to pull a communication? We got a motion. Move to accept and file one and two. So moved. On the motion. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. And Height? Yes. Thank you very much. Before we get into uh, business, I want to, uh, you know, we, this 2020 is census year, and uh, uh, we're really trying to attack the census this year to make sure that we get a, a really valid count, um, as Steve's going to tell you here in just a minute. It's, it's a lot of money riding on the table that we do this in the correct way. Uh, we've just started a PR campaign. Steve Shields uh, has worked diligently and is doing a great job. And I ask if he would come tonight and give us a, um, an executive summary on um, what we're doing, how we're doing it, and uh, so he can answer any questions. But if y'all get any questions, you'll, you'll know because he's going to teach you. So, Steve, great job. Tell us all about it. Thanks, Mayor. First thing I think that's most important when we talk about uh, this year's 2020 census is, as you can see right there, no citizenship question is is on the, the census form. And that's something that I, I know everywhere I go and everybody that I talk to, that's a big point of contention. And there is not anything. All of you have a census sample with the nine questions in front of you right there. and. Uh, Everything on the census will be confidential for 72 years. It's completely locked up. All the information can't go to anyone from ICE to FBI to any anyone uh, that can be that can have that information at their hands to do something with. Um, the simple thing, and not to go into every question, but they're real simple questions. When you talk about asking name of people in a household, is it a house, apartment, uh, mobile home, those type questions are on there. Asking the race, asking uh, male or female. So very simple questions. And as Mayor mentioned, there's big money at hand right here. When you talk about $675 billion in federal fund, that's going to impact every area of our city. When you talk about roads in that area, when you talk about education in those areas, when you talk about uh, medical facilities, new hospitals, new roads, all those things in those areas, that $675 billion breaks down to about $3,300 per person per year for 10 years. Okay, so we're talking $33,000. And as I've heard Mayor mention numerous times, if you take that and we happen to have a 10000 undercount, that equates to $3.3 million that we've lost right there. So there's big money out there. In 2010, we had a count of 62,304, and we feel like we've got a goal of getting over 70,000 in this year's count. If you look right there on the census schedule, and this has been something that's been a little bit hard to get our hands on, but we finally got information. I spent some time last week talking to Sam Abbasi, Alan Green, has been very helpful with the U.S. Census Bureau. Our local guy right here, Sam, is out of 
uh, Chicago with the U.S. Census Bureau. In mid-March, March 12 through 20, we will all receive, all residents will receive a mailer inviting us to either go online or call an 800 number to fill out the census. This is the first time since 1790 that it's been offered online. Okay, so we'll get the initial invitation. Shortly after that, say between March 16 and March 24, we'll get a second mailer, an invitation to go online or call the number to fill out the census. Shortly after that, there will be a third mailer. Now this gets us to the mid April time frame, early to mid-April. That will encourage the phone call or to go online as well. On the fourth <laughs> mailer, which will be sometime end of April period, maybe May 1st, we'll get a paper questionnaire. So everyone will receive a paper questionnaire. Now when I'm saying everyone, I'm saying everyone who has not filled it out online prior or made the phone call prior. Shortly after that, if, if we have not filled it out at our residences, that's when the numerators will come around and knock door to door in early May. Okay, so that's kind of the time frame. This year, everything will be shut down on July 31st. We were told at one point we thought it might go to mid, mid September. That is not correct. It's going to stop on July 31st because all, all the count information has to go to Washington and be there by the end of the year. Several things that we've done uh, as a city, mayor agreed to let us put stickers on all 613 city vehicles. You'll see them on the back. Our tagline is count me in. So you'll see a lot of those on all the different vehicles out there. We've got a ton of yard signs out there already. I will have yard signs right here at the door when council meeting is over tonight for anybody that's wanting to take one and put them in their, in their yards. We've also got these buttons. This is one in Spanish. Everything that we have done has been in Spanish and English, as you all have one of each in front of you tonight. Um, but these buttons are being worn at, at various banks, at various organizations around the city. Some of the other things that, that we've encouraged some business owners to do, and a lot of them have been very open. John Owens has been outstanding with the chamber helping us with this. And going to different, different uh, business owners and having on Census Day, which is April 1st, uh, having a computer available. Uh, let me back up one time. On the, on the internet, that will become available online in that mid-March area when we receive our first mailer. But we're gonna have different places where businesses will have people that can go online at their business and fill out the census on, on different days. And that's something that Judge uh, Jones and, and Judge Morley have been very good about opening up and our IT department's gonna set up some different computers around. One's gonna be right there in their probation officers uh, office right there where people can come in and out right there and fill out the census. That's pretty much That's it. It's big money for us. Very good. Questions? Yes. Go ahead, Ms. Ken. Um, have you hired all of your enumerators already? You know, that, that is one thing that's a little bit of a misunderstanding. I should have covered that earlier, but we are not actually hiring anybody, okay? The U.S. Census Bureau does all the hiring. You'll see some yard signs around the city with the, the uh, website for people to go to. They had a, uh, the Census Bureau being, they had a big uh, push on May 13th over at the Bank of America building where they opened up and helped people apply. We had a lot of response on that. We put it on our website, on our Facebook page. Jim Billings has been outstanding helping put a lot of stuff out there for us, but that's a little bit of a misconception. We, we Cities don't do any of the hiring with that. That's all done from the Census Bureau. Ron? Did I hear you correctly in saying that if we go online and complete this uh, census, then we should not be receiving one of these in the mail. That's correct. If, if, if we go online when we receive that first mailer and fill that out, 
we will, we will not get that second mail or third mail or no enumerators coming to the house. The, the actual, the enumerators don't actually find out where they're going until one, maybe two days before they're going door to door. Okay. The actual addresses. Okay. I'll just but I, I will tell you this about the jobs. There are still jobs out there. They're still hiring. They were advertising back in October and November in Pulaski County where they would be paying $14 for field workers, fifteen fifty for field supervisors. Now they've upped it to nineteen and twenty three fifty. So there are good paying part time jobs out there. Any other questions? Steve, thank you very much. You and your your volunteers are doing a great job. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Okay, let's go right on into unfinished business. Um, o twenty ten, Council Member Robinson. We're going to uh, hold that legislation. Uh, some of my constituents have some questions about it, so. Uh, I need to get with the um, city attorney, and, and we're going to hold it. Mayor, can I say something? Sure. The thing that I do want to say is that this legislation is about signs, period. Not only campaign, but garage sales, signs, period. So we're not targeting uh, one particular group or anything like that. It's about all signs. So right. cleaning up our right of way. We gotta clean up our right of way. You're right. <clears throat> Good deal. Thank you. No nope. new business. R twenty thirty two, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into an agreement for electric customer assistance with Central Arkansas Development Council. Move for adoption. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. O2033, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into an agreement to the lease agreement um, with 10th Street Warehouse Associates LLC for warehouse space located at 10th Street Suites 417 and 425. Move for adoption. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. R2034, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located at 200 Mosley Street in the city of North Little Rock to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for property owner to abate said nuisance. So moved. Second. Call public hearing. Anyone here to speak on 200 Mosley Street? Anyone here to speak at 200 Mosley Street? Seeing none, close public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. And Height? Yes. R2035, Mayor Smith? Please call it. One, I believe you need to pull because it was sold. We got notice from code enforcement that it had sold. We did, and I forgot to pass the word along. I apologize. Okay. R2035, I'm going to withdraw it. O2015? Mayor Smith. Please call it. An ordinance amending the 2020 quota ordinance, ordinance number 9197 for the North Little Rock Parks and Recreation and Public Works Departments, declaring an emergency. First reading. Move to spend the readings. Second. Right. The motion to spend all readings. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. About a motion. Move to adopt. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. 
2016, Mayor Smith. Please call it. An ordinance waiving formal bidding requirements for the purchase of a switchgear from Federal Pacific for the Justice Building, declaring an emergency. First reading. Move to suspend the readings. Second. Move a motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. Move for adoption. Second. On motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. O2017, Mayor Smith? Please call it. An ordinance approving a change order in the amount of $76,870.50 for the Funland Drive drainage pipe re uh, replacement project, waiving formal bidding requirements, appropriating funds, declaring an emergency. First reading. Move to suspend all readings. Second. On the motion to suspend all readings. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. Talk to me. Move for adoption. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. On the emergency? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. O2018, Council Member Ross? Please call it. An ordinance amending ordinance number 7934, which vacated and abandoned a street right of way at the intersection of North Olive Street and West 47th Street, and authorized the sale of the same to Rudolph Frazier, declaring an emergency. First reading. Move to suspend the readings. Second. On the motion to suspend all readings. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. The, uh, Ms. Ross, uh, uh, Mr. Fraser understands that the easement is there, is still there. Yeah, I, I just kind of wanted to explain what this was. This is something that goes back to April of 2009. Uh, it's near Bridge Road Elementary, right there at the corner of Locust and 47th or McCain. Some people call it McCain. There was a small corner of his yard when they widened that street. They made it four lanes with a turn lane, so there's basically five lanes there now. But when we he wanted to purchase that property because he takes he has his purple martins he takes care of it he, so we did sell him that portion but we had in there a stipulation that if uh the city ever wanted to repurchase that property or needed that property they could repurchase at that price well now you know he's had some health issues and he's thinking about when he has to sell it and that would be a deterrent having that in there that the city could repurchase it so this is just to remove that one clause but he does understand the easements are still there uh, on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. And Height? Yes. O2019, Council Member Taylor? Please call it. An ordinance reclassifying certain property located at 2524 Gribble Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas from cons conservation zoning classification to the R4 zoning classification by amending ordinance number 7697, adopting an amended land use plan for the subject property, declaring an emergency. First reading. Move to suspend the readings. Second. On the motion to suspend all readings. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. And Hyde? Yes. So moved. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. And Hyde? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. And Height? Yes. Do you know what he's building down there, Mr. Taylor? Yeah, uh, he's thinking about building uh, another house on it. Single family home? Yeah. Okay, sorry, Taylor. It's okay. O2020, Council Member Harris? 
an ordinance granting a waiver of the sidewalk requirements of section 12.21 of the zoning ordinance and section 9.11 of the subdivision ordinance for certain real property located along White Oak Drive in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, declaring an emergency. First reading. Second. On a motion to suspend all readings. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. And Height? Yes. Motion. Somebody give me a motion. Move for adoption. Second. On a motion. Question. Ross? Question, sorry. Ms. White? Oh. Um, I'm, I'm always hesitant to vote for sidewalk waivers. Could I have a better explanation of than what's in this legislation of why we would waive these sidewalks along here? Your mic's not turn your mic. On the south side, and it, it would just, it, it, nobody would ever, nobody ever walk on the sidewalk. It, no, it would never be used. People don't like going up the street. It's straight up the hill. Right, uh, kind of like Snake Hill. It's about as bad as Snake Hill. Kind of like Snake Hill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm just. That's a good exercise. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there ever any potential to build along that area on that side? I, I'm looking at the picture, so you don't know what I'm looking at. Down below, not on. Not, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. It, it, it'll never go all the way up. Okay. I mean, so that will always be a green belt along there. Well, I don't know about a green belt, but I mean, it's they're. I think they're trying to subdivide. I think they're trying to first two or three first two lots you know in the curve right there and then and then there's nothing going to be uh, you, you have to hang off a cliff to to go on up and i don't know if there's room for that either either so there's no houses that potentially will be, be built along this area that we're going to weigh the sidewalk yes there were uh, there's scheduled they're trying to do three down at the, there's there's two lots down there at the, at the very end that kind of face the other and then maybe one lot behind it. I haven't seen the, the flats. But but I think what they're thinking is, is that at the bottom of the hill, there's two lots right here they can build on. Mm -hmm. And so if we made them do a sidewalk, it'd be a sidewalk to nowhere. Because once it, once it stops right there, it's too steep to build anything else. So that makes sense. You know I mean? I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. It'd be a sidewalk that goes okay. nowhere. Ms. Ross, did you have a question? Well, I was just, are there any other sidewalks anywhere in this whole neighborhood? Yeah, on the White Oak. I mean, down on the bottom down there, on the left side. So, the, so there are sidewalks down there on White Oak. Then. On the, on that one, on that one stretch there, yeah. So this would not complete a, a if someone wanted to walk up the hill or whatever, it wouldn't be. You know, like I said, Snake Hills walked quite often. It's a good workout. So it, I didn't to, know. Uh, it would be a if you required them to do sidewalks, it would be a sidewalk to nowhere, and it would be dead ended. That's all I'm saying. So there's no potential for building at the top of the hill? Right. No, I mean, you're going to have to, it would, it would stop eventually, and nothing's ever going to be built there. At the top of the hill. And you'd have to bring in, I don't know, 20 loads of dirt just to get it up level to put, to put a sidewalk on. So, I mean, that's the, that's the main thing. So, anyway. Where are we? Go ahead. No, I'm just questioning, would Snake Hill, would it even be allowed to be built a sidewalk that steep now due to ADA regulations? I mean, would it, I mean, if you're saying it's that, that difficult, then wouldn't ADA come into compliance and it wouldn't be able to be built? I couldn't tell you. Chris was in here just a second ago. Okay. It, it, Sean, do you know if there's a requirement on sidewalks on, on how steep a sidewalk can be? I wouldn't want to be in a wheelchair to put that way. There's ADA requirements, but a sidewalk could still be more than that, but it would, wouldn't be ADA acceptable. So it's sort of a gray area there, but yeah, I wouldn't want to, whoever said have a wheelchair there, it wouldn't be safe. Correct. On the motion. Ross. I'm going to pass. White. Say no. Taylor. Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. And Height? Yes. Can I ask one more question there? Go ahead. Does the city allow sidewalks to be built that are not ADA? Probably. I, I doubt we've done it in years, but at one, yes, one point in time, we let them build one up 
up Snake Hill. Uh, well, I know that's years ago, but I meant to current current standards. I know that any time. I don't, I don't know that if, if, crossing, if a developer that. wanted to build one that was uh, steeper than what ADA was, we would probably let them, wouldn't we, Sean? I'd have to ask Chris. Okay. Well, wander out there and ask him, and, and we'll it's go curious. ahead and get out of this, and then we'll come back. Uh, but the thing is, is, is you know, even if you don't have a sidewalk there, what we've seen all over town is they drive their scooters right in the street, which is going to be probably the same grade as what your sidewalk would be. Right. Let's do the emergency. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. Wyatt? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Gien? Yes. And Hyde? Yes. O2021, Council Member Baxter. Please call it. An ordinance allowing a special use to allow a food trailer in an I-2 zone for certain real property located at 10401 Maumel Boulevard in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, declaring an emergency. First reading. Move to suspend all readings. Second. On a motion to suspend all readings. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Gin? Yes. And Height? Yes. Move for adoption. Second. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Gin? Yes. And Hyde? <coughs> yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Gin? Yes. And Hyde? Yes. O2022, Councilmember Baxter? About White. White. I'm sorry. What? Oh, it. An ordinance granting a conditional use to allow a food truck court in a CPH zone for certain real property located at 20, uh, 3623 JFK Boulevard in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, declaring an emergency. First reading. Move to suspend the rules and place it on third reading. You want to suspend all readings? Yes. Got a motion to suspend all readings. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. And Height? Yes. Motion. Mr. Comrie? to adopt. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. And Height? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Ginn? Yes. Height? Yes. Question? Yeah. This um, food truck court that's going to be on JFK, so this will allow several trucks yes. to be there? Four. Yeah. It'll allow four? Maximum. And they have to have the licensing and all that stuff Absolutely. Yes. to be there? Mm -hmm. Okay. The uh, Sean and Chris already left. They're working yes. out, you know. Uh, huh? um, no, just no. talk to him in the morning. Ask him to call Council Member Ross and give him give her an update on what his opinion is on it. Is that okay, Debbie? Yeah, yeah, sure. I just curious. Okay. Um, all right. Does that conclude legislation as far as that, Mayor? I just wanted to have a comment about the food court. Go ahead. I've had a, I've had a lot of your constituents and a lot of. Them my friends that live in your ward call me and they think that's a great idea. They'll get the parking issue worked out if it's, you know, and uh, we look forward to uh, dining in the food court, so. But I've had a lot of people contact me and think that's a really good idea. I was at the Levy United, uh, where was it? Where? Jumpstart. Jumpstart program, and um, uh, some, uh, some of our citizens were there and, and they brought in the, uh, those envelopes again uh, about the service line warranty. And I said, you know, and I, 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 I talked to them about that. You know, that is a real thing. It is a good thing. And I, I, I say all that because I think four times a year at city council, we need to talk about that because the issue comes up and people just like I did when I first you know, did my investigation, I thought as a home builder, I said, man, what is this? You know, and 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 so uh, I just think somehow or another we need to continue to tell our citizens that for those, uh, if you're in a brand new home, it's not warranted. But if you're in a home 20 and 30 years old, you need to seriously look at that because it is a 
uh, how do you say, uh, it's a bona fide deal. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's a real deal. We've got, uh, I think the last count I heard was 4,000 of our citizens were uh, signed up for that. It's a lot better to pay seven or eight dollars a month than to pay five thousand dollars to have a new sewer line put in. So, you know, one thing, uh, Mr. Billings, I know you're listening. We probably ought to include some sort of uh, information on our website about it, and also um, maybe include it in our next magazine that goes out. And uh, I think that's a great idea because I get a lot of phone calls about it. Uh, we might also uh, need to bring in uh, uh, Dan Scott. The neighborhood association and make sure that uh, all of our neighborhood meetings somebody brings it up at those meetings okay good idea thank you in fact they're, they're getting ready to expand that program to uh actually to add another warranty to it so there's sewer line right now there's water line and then to get ready to think add some indo indoor stuff to it so yeah they're they're a good group i was on their national board for well every year until now i, I, I don't know if i'm on it this year or not but uh uh, they're a good company, and um, I don't mind recommending them. And, and we voted as a as a council ten years ago to do it. So and they use local people. I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. They, they yeah. use good local, local contractors. So anyway, okay. Okay, we're in public comment section. I've got one signed up. Uh, Alan Coleman, 13 Bradburn Road. Mr. Coleman, you want to speak? You have three minutes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm Alan. Um, as you mentioned, Mr. Mayor, I, I do live at 13 Bradburn uh, Road. <clears throat> I'm new to the city, North Little Rock. I'm from Little Rock. I've been here for maybe uh, a little bit over a year. But anyway, I live at 13 Bradburn Road, and my problem is that uh, I'm in the cul-de-sac at the very end of the street, Bradburn. And there are five houses, houses there. <clears throat> I have a tenant that's, uh, I'm not a tenant, but a resident that's uh, at 21 and has a number of cars there. And most of his cars are sitting out in the street, in the cul-de-sac. And I've recently learned that that cul-de-sac was made for emergency vehicles, uh, which to me is an obstruction. Not only that, they've been there for as long as I've been in the neighborhood. So now there's mud up under the vehicles, there's growing grass up under the vehicles. I mean, it looks terrible. And I'm sure that most of you guys are, are property owners, so you know the value of your property, and you know how a neighbor can affect your, your value as well. So I've, I've covered this issue with, with some other people, you know, like, you know, uh, when I was in Little Rock, code enforcement, I mean, we all have seen it, and, and over there, you know, they take care of it. But here, I, I don't understand why it has not been an issue so I, I just I was told by some other people that you know I had talked to about it to come here and maybe it would be looked into more so uh, because I've, I'm like at a dead end and I, I just do not understand why you know uh, uh, the city uh, would, would would take you know some kind of action uh, so I just hope that who have you, you got, talked to well I've spoken with code enforcement um, I've spoken with uh, 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 I think it was uh, uh, Gary uh, over there, and I've, I've spoken with uh, the director. He's talked to the police department. We've put up signs in the cul-de-sac, no parking. Uh, just an exhaustive effort trying to trying to get the cars moved, but just still to no avail. We hadn't been able. Hadn't Did been the cars start? Time. Right. Uh, here's the story. I don't know if I have enough time, but the cars used to not start. They originally were in the yard. And code enforcement went out there, spoke to the to the resident. He made sure that they started. I'm, now I'm in the neighborhood. I'm right beside him, so I see everything that's happening. He made sure that they started, and then he put them in the street, and he left them there, and they don't move. And there's no parking signs down there. <clears throat> yes. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. There's a parking sign that says no parking in this area in the center of that cul-de-sac. Now what they what what he does is he moves his vehicle to the opposite side. Right, so you know they just sit there once again. The um, chief send somebody down there look at that and uh, let me know what we need to do. We'll send PD down there look at it. And we we've had put PD down there already. Well. Yeah, 
Let, they'll look at it and give me an update, and then we'll work on it. Uh, Ms. Whitby, uh, let Mr. Coleman get his phone number or his email address so that uh, somebody can reach out and touch him. However you want to do it. I, yeah. Now, why don't you wait just a minute? We'll be through in just a second. Okay. Okay, uh, council members, uh, anybody on this side? Ms. Ross, go ahead. I'm going to save, what I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save her for last. Go ahead. Uh, oh, no, I was just going to say that we've got so many emails and, and comments about having the first food truck court in the city, and I know that, that Joy's going to do a great job. She's got a lot of work to do, and we're looking forward to it. Well, good. Ms. White. Mr. Back. I was just going to say, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on this weekend in town, marathon weekend. Uh, I know the travelers are having their big um, employment uh, um, opportunity meeting this weekend. A lot of stuff going on. Just another chance for us to put our best foot forward. So, And I, I would imagine you're not going to be out Sunday morning, Mayor. I'm going to run the half marathon this time. <laughs> no. I'm, I've only got one arm, though. Are you going to run? I'm going to participate. Okay. We'll say that. I understand. <laughs> okay, Miss White. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if you'll forgive me from reading for reading this, that's the only way I can do it. Um, today, I'm announcing that I'm not going to run for another city council term in November. It's not a sudden decision or one I've made lightly. The way I can illustrate it is, our pastor once was closing out a sermon. When he finished, he said he was done and there was no more for him to say. He believed he'd done what God had instructed him to do and he was finished. He felt that if he went on, he might be out of the purpose for which he was there. I believe my time serving on this council is completed. I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve in North Little Rock, my adopted city. I'm thankful to my family and the wonderful people who supported me to get here. Now I need to go and do the next right thing. It's a new season and a new direction for me. There's still 10 months to go in my term, so this is not goodbye. I plan to continue working very hard for the city in Ward 1, helping prepare the way for many changes that lie ahead for our community. And I'm going to leave one scripture with you, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll have to look it up. Philippians 1.3. Thank you. See me afterwards because I don't want to have to look it up tonight. Philippians 1. <laughs> All right, Missy, if you're at home, write that down. One. I got it for you, man. You got it? Okay. The, uh, uh, we passed out to you guys. Um, I don't know if anybody noticed uh, the last couple of days, especially today, the bottom fell out of the stock market. And it also fell out of the bond market. And... Um, we have been talking to uh, uh, Stevens about the possibilities of refinancing uh, that uh, 16, 17 million dollar bond that we've got with them that pays out in five years. And uh, with the bond market dropping today as many points as it did, it got to a position where we actually could save $750,000 over the next five years um, between now and 2025. Uh, you know, that's uh, $175,000 a year uh, that we can save by doing this refinance. Uh, the issue is, is that, you know, everything's volatile. You know, I mean, it could go back up. You know, we got two weeks before the next council meeting. Now, there, this is a private placement, and the bank that was going to take, uh, that was going to give us this price said if we gave them a verbal commitment that they would hold this price until the next council meeting and so we wanted to show you this to see if everybody's on the same page as I am and if we are then we will give them a verbal commitment and then we'll bring back legislation in two weeks to um, to approve it um, so with that Danny's here Ember's here if anybody's got any questions on this now would be a good time to ask it any thoughts Ross? I really haven't even had time to look over it. So how long does this extend the period? It doesn't months? extend it at all. No extension. No extension. It'll no. pay out in 2025. So the only thing is savings, correct? Well, only thing is savings, correct. Nod your head, Ember. Is that right, Danny? Okay. 
Well, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, how about a voice vote to uh, allow me to go ahead and give verbal commitment on this? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> Carry that forward, Chief and Ember, please. The um, I certainly want to uh, recognize Chief Davis before we get out here. I guess the way I look at it, this is your last <laughs> council meeting as chief, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, I've been thinking, and I've talked to Judge Morley, and uh, you know, we've we've just had a, a a lot of stuff come up that the mayor of the judge's office needs to be represented. So he is going to ask Kathy to come to all the council meetings for the next two years. So. <laughs> Uh, Chief, uh, your retirement ceremony is Thursday at 2 o'clock uh, at the Hayes Center, Community Center, uh, uh, Senior Center. Uh, I want to tell you how much we're going to miss you, man. Uh, you've done a great job, and I've got all confidence in the world in, in Chief Ralston taking your, your place. But uh, still, uh, uh, we're gonna, we'll limp around a little bit without your leadership, no doubt. Congratulations on your retirement. That's not what I said when he told me he was going to retire, by the way. <laughs> All right, anybody else got anything to go to the order? Uh, seeing none, how about a motion? I'll move. Second. Second. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Gin